Hello, today is Friday, June 24th, and this is Friday 5 at 5 with the Denver Public Library. My name is Erin. I'm a librarian at DPL's Central Library, and in 15 minutes or less, we'll have you up to speed on five new titles out this month that we can't wait for you to read or listen to. Do you have children in your life? Share the library love by signing them up for Summer of Adventure, DPL's summer reading program, where anyone 18 and under can earn prizes, including a book of their choice for reading, making, and exploring. Last day to register is August 6th and can be done at any of our locations in person or online. Link below. A regular meditation practice can help you cultivate kindness and inner peace two things we desperately need in these stressful times. Join us virtually every Friday in July at 10 a.m. to learn different meditations and practice them. Connect with other members of your community and experience the power of meditating in a group. Each class will include some teaching on mindfulness themes, such as types of meditation, resilience, stress reduction, and so on, followed by 30 minutes of practice. All levels are welcome. And here are June's book recommendations. First up is Lapvana by Atessa Moshfeg, who is best known for her satirical My Year of Rest and Relaxation and her unique murder mystery, Death in Her Hands. Shifts genres yet again with this quirky, disturbing medieval tale set in the fictional European town of Lapvana. 13-year-old Merrick has been abused by his father, seen a plague spread over the land, and witness the greed of Lord William, who sits atop a hill, hoards food, and does nothing but watch as atrocities are committed in the town. Yet Merrick retains his optimism and faith in God, even as he witnesses acts of pervasive brutality. But when corruption comes to a head and the narrative shifts, Merrick wonders if remaining God-fearing and faithful is worth it. While Atessa Moshfeg imbues her story with her trademark fascination with the imaginary and grotesque, Publishers Weekly notes in their starred review that her depictions of inequality are uncanny and all too familiar. It's a triumph. From publisher Penguin Random House and available at DPL in print or as an ebook or e audiobook through Overdrive. It's tough to find a book quite like this one, but if you're looking for more medieval era horror, Try Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman or Hollow by B. Catling. In Blood Orange Night, My Journey to the Edge of Madness, author Melissa Bond describes her descent into benzodiazepine addiction. The mother of an infant and a toddler with a distant husband, Bond suffered from extreme insomnia and lost her job due to the 2008 recession. Her doctor prescribed her benzodiazepines, a class of drug that includes Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, and Ativan to help with her insomnia and other issues, and he continued to regularly increase her dosage. As her body begins to shut down and she realizes she is putting her children in danger, Vaughn comes to understand that her doctor has overprescribed her these medications and she is, as her subtitle says, on the edge of madness. However, if she were to quit cold turkey, she could suffer from side effects including psychosis and seizures that could lead to death. She begins the months-long process of tapering off the medications, hoping to avoid those fatal side effects as she continues to care for her children and move on in her life. As Kirkus Reviews points out, Bond's sharp critique of Big Pharma and the broken American healthcare system sounds an urgent alarm. Bond's voice is a necessary one in America, a country grappling with the consequences of overprescribing medication that leads to addiction. From publisher Simon and Schuster, and available at DPL in print or as an ebook or e audiobook through Overdrive. For another book that takes on Big Pharma, try Empire of Pain The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty by Patrick Radden Keefe. And if you're looking for another book about overcoming madness and mistaken diagnosis, give Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness by Susanna Callahan a read. Next up is another book that discusses an important issue we face today in America. Editors Amy Brady and Taja Issen 
combine essays from 19 literary writers from around the globe in The World as We Knew It, Dispatches from a Changing Climate. These essays focus on how climate shifts have been felt, mourned, and protested from Antarctica to Australia, New Hampshire to New York, and include contributions from Lydia Millett, Alexander Kleeman, Kim Stanley Robinson, Omar El Akkad, Melissa Phoebos, and more. What really makes this book special is that each author provides a private and personal look at the world through the lens of capturing the way familiar places have been transformed in startling ways. Essays range from the effects of invasive species to rising sea levels to extreme droughts and the consequences of all of these and more. As Kirkus said in its starred review, the result is a poignant ode to a changing climate. From publisher Penguin Random House and available at DPL in print or as an ebook through Overdrive. For another startling look at the effects of climate change, check out The Uninhabitable Earth Life After Warming by David Wallace Wells. And if you're looking for some hope around this subject, try All We Can Save Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis edited by Ayana Elizabeth Johnson and Katherine Keeble Wilkinson. Felicia Fifi Stevens, a young black girl living with her mother and older brother, is the main character of Last Summer on State Street, a novel by Toya Wolf. In the summer of 1999, they lived in building 4950 of Chicago's Robert Taylor Homes off of State Street, a housing project high rise notorious for segregation, violence, and neglect, that is next in line to be torn down by the Chicago Housing Authority. Despite the looming fact that their neighborhood is falling down around them, Fifi and her two friends, Precious Brown and Stacia Buchanan, form a trio that allows them to briefly carve out a simple and carefree life for themselves. When a new girl, Tanya, enters their friend group, dynamics shift and the lives of all four girls are upended. Decades later, as Fifi remembers that fateful summer, she tries to make sense of the grief and fraught bonds that still haunt her. Author Wolf, who also grew up in the same housing project, stated that the point of view of a young black girl is one of the most underrepresented perspectives in storytelling and that she was curious about how a girl from a Chicago project that was slated for demolition would feel and express herself about it. Written with grace and restraint, Last Summer on State Street is a unique story not to be missed. From publisher HarperCollins and available at DPL in print or as an ebook or e-audiobook through Overdrive. For more books that discuss the coming-of-age stories of black girls and women who face unsettling odds, try The Mothers by Brett Bennett or Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Brown Neon by Raquel Gutierrez is the debut book of personal memoir-like essays that is described by Kirkus as being a probing, tender reckoning with space, place, and identity. Gutierrez divides the book into three sections, love and kin, land and movement, and art and labor, which all lend to, as Gutierrez themselves says, a relational map to make, see, and share the world we could actually belong to if we could sustain the intimacy. Brown Neon depicts a queer family tree, multiple forms of grief, navigating desire and heartbreak, and engaging with the wounds resulting from decades, or centuries, of erasure and disposition throughout the southwest U.S. and northern New Mexico. About the title, Gutierrez writes, I am a brown neon sign, aimless, aging, homosexual hipster with attachment issues. This collection is bold and brave in its honesty and description of coming into your own. From publisher Coffee House Press and available at DPL in print or as an ebook through Overdrive. For more LGBTQ plus essays, read I Hope We Choose Love by Kai Chang Tom or Non Binary Lives, an anthology of intersecting identities, edited by Joss Twist, Ben Vincent, Meg John Barker, and Kat Gupta. And for even more essays surrounding all types of topics, 
check out our essay core collection. Link below. Plus, in case you missed it, let's end this video on a note of nostalgia. Chuck Klosterman's book, The 90s, published at the beginning of this year, comes a full two decades after the end of the 1990s. As Klosterman says in his opening chapter, now the 1990s seem like a period when the world was starting to go crazy, but not so crazy that it was unmanageable or irreparable. It was the end of the 20th century, but also the end to an age when we controlled technology more than technology controlled us. It was a good time that happened long ago, although not nearly as long ago as it seems. Covering the impact of cultural events that had ramifications throughout this decade, such as the fall of the Berlin Wall and Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit music video, the Mandela Effect, and the once-loved, now-hated, cult classic movie American Beauty. For those of us who lived through the 90s, and for those who didn't, this book provides a solid examination of the way we, as a country, thought about life then, the way we think about that decade now, and how the events that happened then set the stage for the events that are happening now. From publisher Penguin Random House, and available at DPL in print, or as an ebook or e audiobook through Overdrive. For more books that try to explain how the past created our future, check out Michael Pollan's this is Your Mind on Plants, and Jared Diamond's classic, Guns, Germs, and Steel. That's it for this month. Thanks so much for tuning in to Denver Public Library's Five at Five, and we hope you enjoy these great reads and listens. Check out or place a hold on these titles and a whole lot more right now at denverlibrary.org, link below, and be sure to tune in next month for a whole new batch of recommended reads. Bye.